How do there, folks? Welcome in. A lot to get into in this one here today. A lot of things to talk about in the market, a lot of stocks to talk about. Um, I want to talk about a few stocks specifically in today's video that we haven't talked as much about uh, recently. And so um, talk about those today. Busy video. Appreciate you all joining me. Thanks for being subscribed. Let's get straight into this. Also, everybody that's in the Patreon squad, I did post my moves in there today along with the entire portfolio. If you're looking to join us in there and get access to all the moves I'm making in the market, the portfolio, the Patreon portfolio, everything like that, check out the pin comment down there. That will be to join us in there. Okay. So Janet Yellen convenes Friday meeting with top U.S. regulators as crisis engulfs banking sector. Janet Yellen did call kind of an emergency meeting basically today. Okay. And it's, it's interesting that she called this emergency meeting because it goes to show you kind of, um, I think the worry out there from folks like her about the, the the state of the banking system and how whatever's transpired over the last couple of weeks is not finished, it's not cleaned up, it's not fixed yet, okay? And if I take you back, I, you know, I don't know how many people were in the market back in 2008, 2009, 2010 that are watching this video. And shout out to you guys if you're watching this and you were in the market back then. But nonetheless, if you understand kind of what happened with the banking system back then, we went through a very tough time for several years. A lot of people think about 2008 and they think, oh, that must have been the worst of it. No, that was not even close to being the worst of it. That's just what people remember. In 2008, 25 banks basically went under roughly, okay? But what about 2009? Let me show you this. In 2009, 140 banks went under in 2009. Now, you might say, well, the stock market bottomed March of 2009, so it must have been fine from there. No, it got even worse. Look at this. In 2010, 157 banks failed in 2010. You know, that's like, I would guarantee you most people watching this video right now, you were not even uh, aware of that prior to me showing you that, right? That is that goes to show you the level that the banking system can get hit for years, right? And even after the market bottom and everything like that, continually banks went under, went under. And so I think Janet Yellen's looking at this, right? And she was obviously at very important positions even back in, in those days, right? I think she's looking at this. And back then, if I recall, uh, Fed president was Ben Bernanke. She's likely looking at this and, and thinking about like, you know, as Treasury Secretary, could we have a similar phenomenon where 2023 is just a start of banks going under and then we have like next year's actually much worse and the following years even another level worse, let's say in 2025. Now, let me show you something absolutely shocking. This is going to blow your mind. Look at this. In 2020, we only had four banks fail, four in all of 2020. In 2021, zero banks failed in the United States of America. In 2022, zero banks failed in the United States of America. Those, you know, that, that's pretty freakish. I will say that, okay? You know, because usually you at least have a few banks failing every single year, right? And we had no bank failures at all. So all of a sudden, 2023, we're starting to have some banks fail here. And the worry is that this could lead to more and more banks failing. And 2023 is just a start. And maybe by the end of this year, we see 20 or 30 banks. So... I think what she's trying to get out in front of is a situation where we have multiple years where massive amounts of banks are going under. When I say massive amounts, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of banks going under. Not three banks, not five banks, hundreds of banks, okay? And I think that's what she's getting out in front of here now. Now, in regards to the market back then, the stock market, right? I have a theory on why the market actually tanked so heavily in that 2007 through 2009 crash. I think the recession component of it, despite unemployment going to 10% and despite corporate earnings falling and all those things, I actually think that was only a piece of it. The reason I believe the indexes actually fell 50% is I think there were so many banks, hedge funds, funds in general that were all failing simultaneously that it caused a massive forced sell, almost like a, the, the biggest margin call in creation. And it all happened simultaneously because everybody was failing at the same time. And that's what actually sent the market down 50% from 07 peak to the 09 trough. The Dow went down just over 50%. I think, I think the market would have maybe went down 20 or 30% if it was just the recession component of it. And it was just the earning side of it. But because 
of all those banks failing. Because remember, a lot of these banks, especially back in those days, held a lot of securities. And if you're going under, you're just selling assets at any price. It doesn't matter if you're selling for pennies on the dollar. If you can get 10 bucks for something, you're selling for 10 bucks. It doesn't matter. There's forced selling. It's like the world's biggest margin call all happened at the same time. And then obviously we bottomed out early 2009, right? And then we started going back up from there. But I believe that's why. That is why. And, and was the economy magically fixed in suddenly spring of 2009? So meant the stock market goes, no. But I believe the forced selling ended. And then you just had a little buying pressure come in with very little selling pressure. And I believe that's what created this market dynamic where the market started to go up and recover before the economy really started to recover. Unemployment didn't bottom then. The economy didn't even bottom then. The economy actually continued to get worse. Corporate earnings started to get much better at the very end of 2009, 2010. But it wasn't like everything was magically fixed in the world, I can tell you that. But the stock market was coming back. It's because we had this insane forced sell on the market. It was pretty substantial. So we'll never know how much of this fall here was forced selling. We'll never know it. Um, but I have a theory that it was substantial. And that's what created such an insane sell-off in that particular market, okay? And I think that's something they're trying to, to prevent from happening. Now, this is insane, okay? Because here today you have Janet Yellen. This, and that came out during market trading, by the way, the Janet Yellen thing. That came out during market trading that she's having an emergency meeting, which is scary to hear, right? And you think, well, emergency meeting, oh my gosh, Janet Yellen's getting this emergency meeting together. It's going to mean the market's going to tank today. The indexes were green. The indexes were flipping flapjack and green, okay? The bears are more mad than ever. And, and think about it from the bearish side, right? I mean, you, you've had almost everything go your way for the bearish side this year, right? We've had bank runs. We've had questions about the financial system and what could go wrong there. Earnings haven't been strong. you got emergency meetings that Janet Yellen's doing. you got the Fed come out there this week and raise interest rates in an environment where we got potentially, you know, massive amounts of banks are on the verge of potentially going under, right, and companies in general. And you had the Fed come out and raise rates again and say, we don't care. So you have all that simultaneously going on. So you've had a lot to go off of as a bear. And yet the market's just not moving down this year. You're just not getting it, right? And so it's a very, very, very frustrating ordeal for the bears to go through. And it reminds me of the first half of 2022 for a lot of us bulls, right, where there's actually some things going right in the first half of this year of the year, right? And then once once Russia Ukraine happened, that that's when dominoes started really falling the wrong way. Inflation kept coming in hot, way hotter than expected. Commodities went on this insane bull cycle in the spring and the summertime. It was out of control, right? And we just started to have things actually start to go against us. But at first, things were it looked like they were going decent. It was like, why does the market keep falling? I think bears are kind of asking themselves the same question right now, where it's like oh, a lot of things are going for us and we can't get this market down, right? But also remember, a lot was praised in last year. Do keep in mind, last year, the NASDAQ was down about 37% from highs. We haven't seen it many times ever in history where the NASDAQ falls 30% plus. It happened last year. And so do keep that in mind, and I think that's really, really important. And so bears are getting very, very frustrated in this whole situation because they're like, my puts keep expiring worthless time and time again, and we can't get this market down. It's, it's very frustrating, right? And you look at a day like today, the NASDAQ just showed more strength as the day went along. I mean, literally, just as the day went along, more strength, more strength. Every sell-off ended up being bought to a higher high throughout the day, right? Incredible. All the way to the end of the day. In the VIX, at exact opposite situation. This baby just kept going lower and lower and lower and lower. And if you're bearish, you need to see the VIX spike in huge right now. You need to see this VIX at 30, 40. Because here's the problem. If you can't get this market down, when you're talking about bank runs, when you're talking about emergency meetings, all this drama, all this craziness, if you can't get this market down, you can't get the market down. That's the bottom line. This is a perfect storm of stuff all happening at the same time. And if you can't get this market down, then basically what the market is doing is looking past what's going on today. And it says in six months, everything's going to be fine. Corporate earnings are going to strengthen. The banking system's not going to be a problem? No, that could be wrong. That could be 100% wrong. But that's what the market is saying to us right now. Now, time has to play out here. We're going to see what happens. But I think that's important for everybody watching this to understand what the market is telling us is actually going to happen, right? Similar to how as bulls started getting hit really hard in the back half of 2021, going into 2022. And a lot of us were like, why is the market going down? Earnings are great. Look at these companies. Like, everything's fine. And it didn't make sense to us at first. Fast forward six months later, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, we get it. 
The Fed's raising like crazy now. Inflation's out of control. All these pieces started to come together, right? Look at this. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. Inflation just dropped under 4% based upon truflation numbers here. This is the best news possible. Okay. Now, government numbers aren't going to show that yet, but I can tell you government numbers will show that. Government numbers will go there over the next several months. And so truflation is going to give us the most accurate, in my opinion, view of actual inflation out there, more, more accurate than the government numbers. And, you know, it's showing under 4% right now, which I'm 100% on board with that being the situation right now. And if we look at their, if you want to go more in depth into kind of their numbers and whatnot, you can look at that. This is uh, food and non-alcoholic beverages, right? It makes up uh, over 15%. I'll just show you the three categories that are over 10% weightings on this, right? And if we look at this, we're showing basically a, a massive drop to around 2%. And I got to say, when it comes to food and non-alcohol related, um, you know, inflation, definitely seen a massive cooling over the last several months now at this point in time. You know, 2022 was awful. Like every single, it seemed like every single time you went to the grocery store, or you did any sort of shopping, Costco, Sam's Club, didn't matter where you went. It seemed like whatever you were buying was more expensive the next week than the, the previous week. It was awful, right? It was out of control. I can tell you that's cooled in a massive, epic way. Over this past, I would say, couple months here. And so that's a good situation we have going for ourselves. Housing, this makes up 23% of the waiting here, right? In, in regards to housing, we're still at elevated. This is the important part to remember. We've dropped off a cliff, right? But we're still, we still—we got a ways to go down. We're going down more on this. Housing is going to continue to get better. Rents are going to continue to moderate or go down depending upon the market. Home prices are going to continue to go down or moderate in basically every single state and city in the United States of America. So the important thing to remember is, yeah, we've dropped off a cliff. We're going lower in regards to this, okay? So this isn't like we're done. Like rents will continue to moderate or go down in markets, especially when you look at the amount of apartments that are about to hit the market. Oh my gosh, okay? In the amount of uh, rental properties that are sitting on the market, look at any city just about in the United States of America. And you're going to see rental properties sitting in mass right now, folks, Okay. So that's great news. If you go ahead and look at transportation, this makes up almost 20% of the waiting, right? Uh, you know, we're down to very, very small amounts of inflation now in this category now at this point in time. So when you look at all these three main components, right, and there's a bunch of other components that go into this, and if you want to look more in depth into it, healthcare and a bunch of other, you know, in, important things, right? But those are the three main components, and we're seeing clearly a massive drop when it comes to this. And so that's that's substantial. That matters in a big way, and that will hit government numbers, and that will affect the market very, very positively, and that will put the Fed in a position where if they want to cut rates in the summertime, they'll be able to cut rates. It doesn't mean they're going to cut rates, so don't bank on that. Don't bank and think, oh, the Fed's going to for sure cut rates this summer. But just understand, when we start talking about these sorts of inflation numbers, and if we start talking about threes this summer, which I think um, I, I'm extremely of the belief. Like, if you told me I could bet half of my net worth that CPI would come in, let's say, um, in the threes at some point this summer, I'd, I'd bet it because I'm that confident that we're going to be in the threes at this summer. And so if that's the situation that plays out, then more than likely we're going to see a Fed that's going to seriously consider cutting rates and probably even do it, especially if they have anything to go off of negative in the economy. If unemployment ticks up at all, if there's anything, if there's more bank failures, all it takes is a few more bank failures or unemployment to start climbing over the next few months with inflation continue to come down fours and threes. Fed's going to cut like that. I guarantee you, man. They'll use any excuse to cut if once they see some sort of weakness. They just haven't had it. You know, inflation's been too high. You know, when you're talking about we are in the nines, eights, sevens. If you look at, uh, you know, true inflation numbers, we are in like the, what, 12, 13 range, right? When you have those sorts of numbers along with unemployment that's in the threes, there's no way the Fed can cut in that situation. It's once things start looking a little bad or worse and then inflation goes lower, that's the moment that the Fed can actually consider cutting rates, right? Now, you look and you see some stocks out there doing tremendously well, right? Elf's a good example. This stock seems like it hits a new high after new high after new high. Another 4% plus move here today. It wasn't like the markets were up 4%, I can tell you that. The markets eat, eked out like small gains, right? What, 0.3%, 0.2%, those type of gains. And this stock showed another 4% gain. You know, $7,200 into the stock, and it's worth $78,000 here today in a matter of just a few years. But when it comes to a company like that, they're executing very, very well. I mean, arguably the best of any public company in the world. Look at their numbers, and you'll be shocked, shocked by how well they're executing. And so 
this is a stock picker's market we're in, folks. This is not just your, your grandma's market of just throw money in an index fund and you're, you're good to go, okay? This is a stock picker's market. Some stocks are going to do absolutely horrible, as we know, right? And there's going to be other stocks that just perform and absolutely wreck the market, right? And I think Elf's just a, a good example of that type of stock that doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. It doesn't matter what's going on out there. Elf's going to put up their numbers because they're special, okay? I'll start with Fubo. I know some folks have been wanting me to talk about Fubo, okay? The issue with Fubo and why the stock is just a floundering stock right now, despite them reporting great revenue growth, great user growth, okay? People don't have patience for a stock like Fubo in this market. People want cash flow in companies. They want profitable companies. They don't want revenue growth and user growth in big losses. And so Fubo's the exact opposite stock the market wants right now. If this was two, three years ago, it's a whole different ballgame for a company like Fubo. But no one has any respect to this, right? Look at what David Gandler put out on, on his Twitter page, right? This is correct. Our plan is to achieve cash flow positive in 2025. I mean, you know, just in this market, no one wants that. The market has zero patience for companies like this, okay? And so Fubo could be an extraordinary opportunity for people that have patience that can, you know, wait it out a while. But I'm just telling you, in this market with, you know, Fed funds rate 5% or whatever we're at, right? So much uncertainty. No one wants a piece of companies like this. And that's why the stock's a dollar today. That's exactly why. No one wants that. You can't talk about cash flow positive in 2025. People want it today. And if it's not today, they want no piece of it. No piece of it. People don't have any risk appetite for anything that's unprofitable and like, we're going to make money someday. And so that's why you're, you're, you're continuing to see these stocks just have trouble and trouble and trouble, despite a lot of stocks doing great, right? Tesla, AMD, NVIDIA, Meta, like, you know, you go through a list of stocks, Apple, Microsoft, those companies are doing tremendous, a lot of big techs. But guess what? Those companies, huge cash flows, huge profitability. And do they have much lower growth rates than they've had in the past? Absolutely. But people look past that because they care about cash flow now. They care about profitability now, right? If I take you back to January 2021, a little over two years ago, there was the peak market I've ever seen in my investing career, which I started in 08, right? That's the peak that I've ever seen in terms of people not caring anything about profit, nothing about cash flows. Profit and cash flow did not matter in that market. And that was literally the peak of the market, right? And then after that, I mean, excuse me, during that time period, everybody's just growth, growth, growth. User numbers, user metrics, revenue growth. It's all people cared about. It's a different market, folks. We're in a very, very different market at this point in time. It is literally the opposite. People care 0% about your user growth, 0% about your revenue growth. They only care about cash flow growth, profit growth, and that's it. That's it in this market, okay? Now, I can tell you it won't be like that forever. And eventually, we will go back to a market that all of a sudden starts valuing user metrics and revenue again. Um, but we'll slowly morph into that over about a five to 10 year span. It'll happen slowly and slowly and slowly. And then once that's all everybody cares about again, that's when you know market's likely peaking again, okay? When, when all everybody's talking about is only user metrics and revenue growth, you know, that, that's eventually what you're going to be into. But the good news is for a while now, for years actually, the market is going to care much more about profitability, margins, cash flow, everything like that, okay? That was a market we morphed into. If you look at a stock like Honest, same as the same exact situation as a Fubo, but the difference between Honest and a Fubo is Honest should be profitable for sure in 2024 on a yearly basis. I wouldn't be surprised if they put up a profitable quarter in 2023, if not two profitable quarters in 2023. But in this market, no one has patience for that. They want it now, today. If it's not today, don't. They, you know, they don't even want it. They No, okay? They, they can't even think about that. If it's not today, they don't want it, right? Why is Meta tearing it up? This stock seems like it hits a new high after a new high after a new high, you know, in, in, you know over, the, over this past basically about five months now, right? Meta, what are they focused on? Cash flow, margins, profitability, net income, right? Everything Wall Street wants, they're giving it efficiency in the business model and what happens that stock is being rewarded day after day after day it seems like the stock market goes down meta goes up market goes up meta goes up it seems like it just doesn't matter right now like it has been like that for like five months now meta is just on an absolute tear but they're giving the market exactly what the market wants right now right and we're doing tremendous we're gonna do a lot better in the stock over the next few years i can tell you that um, this stock's going to 600 plus over the coming years but you know it's giving the market exactly what the market wants 
right now, okay? Even look at a stock like Foot Locker, okay? This stock I personally own in my dividend only account. Important stock for me, I'm still buying it. I like it a lot. I gotta be honest, Foot Locker numbers over the past year were not, they weren't great. They weren't great at all, okay? Matter of fact, I could even make an argument that they were bad. I could make an argument. But yet the stock price is up 24% in the past year. While the indexes are, what, down over the past year? And this stock's up 24%, doesn't even include all the dividends they throw off. But why? Why? Why is that stock up so much over the past year? Not even including all the dividend money they've thrown me. The reason is profitable, low valuation, cash flow, solid business model, balance sheet cash. That's why that stock is performing well, despite the numbers not being great over this past year. Look at their numbers. They're not great. I just looked at them. And yet the stock's performing amazing because that's what the market cares about. Profitability, cash flow. And, and at the end of the day, Foot Locker is going to throw off a ton of cash this year. They're going to pay out nice dividends again this year. They might even up the dividends in 2023. We'll see what happens. Um, it'll be a good year for the company, regardless of what happens in the economy. It'll be a good year for the company. And that's what people care about in this particular market, right? Now, I'm going to probably have to do a whole video dedicated to this. This worries me. And what this worries me in is in regards to the indexes and kind of where the indexes could trend over the next three to six months. We have a freakish divergence going on between the Russell and the NASDAQ right now. This is a year to date. The NASDAQ's up 17.5%. The Russell's down about a percent. That is not normal. That's the furthest thing from normal. Something is wrong. Okay? Remember what I told you guys last year, late last year. There was, I, t I ran you through the difference between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ. And those ones had, had such an insane divergence of like 20 percentage points. It didn't even make sense. I think at one point it even was more than 20 percentage points. Didn't make sense. Something was wrong. Sure enough, what are we seeing this year? The Dow doing pretty much nothing. And uh, actually, I think it's down this year, right? Because SDAO is definitely doing well for me. And NASDAQ performing phenomenal. Huge divergence there, but it's coming back more into line. The Russell and NASDAQ usually move together. Usually move together. Maybe a few percentage points off. We're about 18, 19 percentage points off in, in performance here today. Not normal. There's something wrong, okay? And so I'm going to probably have to do a whole dedicated video just diving into that subject. It's an important subject because no one's talking about it, and I can tell you that is not normal. That is freakish, folks. That is very, very freakish out there. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, that will probably be my next video, diving into that whole subject. Boy, that's going to be an in-depth one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed that video. I appreciate everybody joining me. If you want to see the moves I'm making, check out the Patreon. That's going to be a pinned comment down there. Thanks for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all. Thanks for being subscribed, and have a great day.